Hey, Mike, good to talk to you. Hey, what's up, bro? Um, just first of all, can you just give us an update of where you are health-wise? Uh, you know, have you been cleared by the doctors? If not, when do you expect that sort of thing? I feel great. Um, so as far as uh, being cleared by the doctors, uh, the, the doctors that did my surgery, I pretty much like cleared by. Uh, it's still a process, obviously, from coming back from neck surgery. So um, I'm just in the rehab stages. But yes, if uh, you had to ask the doctor that did my surgery, and uh, I've been cleared to play. Thanks. Uh, Jeff Miller. Uh, hey, Mike. Um, are you uh, fully confident that everything's okay? And just, uh, I don't know if there's going to be a mental hurdle to kind of get over. I imagine <laughs> you start to hit, that'll be a thing. But are you are you pretty comfortable right now and thinking, hey, everything's going to be fine. I should be able to come back and play like I like that? Yeah, I mean, I'm back to training normal like I've always had. Um, so, I mean, I've come, I've come back from surgery before, and I understand that with any surgery that you come by, come back from, uh, there's going to be a mental block from it. But I don't. It's never been a problem for me before. I don't think it will be this this time. So, you know, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm a guy that really believes on what's going to happen is going to happen. And so, uh, I'm excited to get back out there and be able to play football again this year. And have the doctors told you anything in terms of restrictions at all, or expect anything, or are you? Are you Fully expected to be full go, full go like any other any other season. Yeah, I, I mean, I expect to be full go whenever the time comes for us to come back to football. I, that's what I fully expect. Um, I mean, obviously, anytime you come back from surgery, there's always going to be steps when you come back from the first parts of it. But I mean, I'll be ready to go whenever time is ready to come. Okay. Uh, over to Joe Reedy. Hey, Mike. Just wondering where you're at at the moment. If you're too. Uh, if you're not in Orange County with the other linemen, are you helping train? Are you train with your brother, or just who you train? Yeah, I train with my brother. We live in uh, South Florida, so we're actually in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we train at a private gym every day in the mornings, and uh, try and get on the field as much as possible. But uh, since all the parks been closed down, it's been kind of tough to do that. But we've actually just found ways around it. Uh, go out there and be able to do our football drills as if we're in OTAs right now. And then just uh, the, the Zoom session so far with Coach Camp and how's that going and it, what's the biggest change that you think is going to be? I think it's awesome. Uh, I love the Zoom meetings. I feel like uh, you get a lot done doing them. We've obviously been over our whole playbook in these first couple of weeks going through the, the Zoom calls. But uh, just being on Zoom calls, I think we've got so much out of it because, you know, the first couple of weeks when you're back with the, with the guys in the building, you're just in there working out, you know, just building that – you know, chemistry. So for us on these Zoom calls, we're we're on there learning plays. Uh, we're actually able to draw on the screen as as coaches coaching us, and um, it's been it's been a fun experience. I think it's something that NFL is going to probably move forward with. So I think a lot of guys have gotten a lot out of it. All right, uh, over to Kurt Sandoval. Hey, Mike. Uh, good to see you. There, first of all, you too. Um, such a very injury. You know, the, a lot of us were questioning, is this career threatening? When you were, it sounds like it's not, obviously. When you were going through it back in the fall, late fall, and in the winter, that long, how much were you thinking about the future? Well, um, actually, when we, you know, we actually uh, discovered what was going on, at first, I, I really didn't think it was that serious because, you know, what was going on, I really just thought it was just something that was common, you know, that something that was... Uh, actually happened to a lot of guys. So for me, I was never in panic mode about it because of, you know, just how the way I found out. We just thought it was something that was very simple and ended up thinking, finding out it was something bigger than what it was. And so my mindset's always been just from learning everything about it, uh, actually doing the research on it, seeing the guys have come back from the same kind of injury and uh, it just gave me confidence throughout the way. So I just been a guy that just believed in the whole time that, hey, I'm going to be able to come back and play through this. So just a quick follow-up, you talked about training with your brother and coming on, uh, a lot of us heard about how structured you are. How are you mm -hmm. keeping your sanity uh, in these crazy times? Uh, luckily, uh, luckily enough, uh, we've been able to uh, have a friend that owns a, a private gym. So we've been able to go every morning and still be able to work out and uh, just get away and be able to go do the things that we normally do in the off season. Uh, I guess the thing that suck about it is that usually this time of the year we're back in our facilities hanging out with the guys, you know, you know, building that extra camaraderie that you kind of lose whenever you go away for three months. And um, that's the part that, you know, I got a lot of guys realizing 
you know, once you're out of the NFL, this is the life, man. You're, you're away from all the guys. You're outside of the locker room. You know, this is what your life's going to be once you're a retired football player. So for me, I've, I've kind of figured it out that I don't want to retire anytime soon. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. All right. Uh, Fernando Ramirez. Hey, Mike. How are you doing? Uh, doing good. How about yourself? Good, thank you. Uh, I just want to see uh, talk about a little bit about the additions that you guys made uh, to the offensive line. Have you gotten a chance to talk to Trey Turner and Brian Balaga? And if you have, what are your first? Uh, what What have you kind of noticed about them? And because uh, they're both, uh, they both come and they say that they're the other teams have said that they're leaders. So I just wanted to get uh, your thoughts on them. These guys are great football players. I actually known Trey for a long time. Um, you know, I, I know he was a guy that I've uh, always you know, followed throughout his career. He's a guy that's younger than me, but uh, always just follow him as a, as a player. Uh, Brian the same way, Pro Bowl type player. And these guys, I mean, I've, I've liked them, just following them throughout their careers. So I think it was easier for me just to bond with these guys. These Zoom calls have been very, very, uh, you know, I said useful before, but I think they've, they've been awesome because you get, a, you get to see a guy's personality, you get to see a guy's knowledge about football, you get to get to see a guy's, you know, care and want to. and I think with these two guys, that the addition that they brought to our football team is that they're two guys that really love football. Uh, the knowledge of the game is there. And so I'm excited to have these guys a part of our line. Uh, over to Gilbert. Hey, uh, Mike. Uh, it's going to be probably a, a little weird for you this, this season. You're not going to be snapping the football to Phillip Rivers. Uh, what's your reaction to kind of move on, I guess, not having Phil on your team and then kind of going to Tyrod and Justin Herbert? Uh, I guess I feel like every Phillip Rivers fan feels, you know. It, it sucks to see him play for a different football team. You know, I guess all of us have admired him his whole career, uh, the player that he's always been, the person that, he's, that he is. And um, I wish him nothing, nothing but the best. You know, I'm going to miss everything about him, you know, his preparation, his love for the game. Uh, obviously, him on game day is it's just different having him out there. So. <laughs> But, you know, it's, yeah, I've, I've been there before, you know, and I'm excited to see what these guys are going to do. I, I, I really believe in Tyrod. I think he's a guy that's proven himself in this league. Uh, he's a baller. Yeah, you, everyone's seen it. If you've been a part of our team last year, you've seen what he does in practice and the way he can you know, run the football, throw the football. And uh, a guy like Justin Herbert, drafted him in the first round, you see the potential that he has. He's a big kid, big arm. And uh, if you ever watched him throughout his college career, you know that he's very explosive throwing the football and running the football. So I'm excited to have him. You know, both of those guys in the room, we'll see how uh, the competition part of it works out throughout training camp. But I think if you look at it, that's the kind of way the league's moved to, to have those kind of mobile quarterbacks that can extend plays and you know, be able to help you in the running game. And uh, one more thing, Mike, uh, and people are kind of focused on that, on that right side with uh, Bulaga and Trey Turner, but it's, it's a little question marks on the left side with, uh, with kind of a younger, uh, younger guys there uh, with uh, Trey Pipkins and Dan Feeney and Forrest Lamp. You, you kind of helped them out in, in the last couple of years, but what do you think about those guys kind of now as they keep growing and how do you see them kind of developing for uh, 2020? Yeah, I think a lot, a lot of times people forget, um, you know, what it takes, you know, for young offensive linemen in this league to be able to play well. And uh, they just expect them to come straight in to, out of college and be a pro from day one and, and day year one through three in their careers. And it just doesn't work like that. Sometimes it takes young linemen, you know, longer to adjust to, to the speed of the game or the, di the different, you know, size of the players. but the, all these guys have gotten a lot of playing time and, you know, they've gotten better and better through all the snaps they've taken. I really believe in them. I think they're all going to be really good football players. You know, sometimes it just takes uh, different coaches to come in and, you know, guys play better underneath the different coaches, different techniques. So this would be an opportunity for all these guys, even including myself, to start from scratch again. You know, I'm a guy that's been away from football now for, you know, longer than most of these guys. So I got to be able to go out there, you know, learn coaches, coach campus, new techniques, start from zero, start from scratch, and, uh, be able to build back the player that I was before. All right, uh, Michael Peterson, you're up. Hey, Mike. Um, so with the offense potentially adding some more pistol looks um, in 2020, does much change in terms of your preparation uh, with the quarterback standing closer to the line of scrimmage? Like, is there much that goes through your head in terms of any differences? No, not at all. I think the shotgun snaps the, the same exact uh, throttle process. Uh, the trajectory of the ball, kind of the same. They're going to catch it around the same area that they catch it where they're standing two yards deeper. But I played in this offense a long time. I was in Miami when uh, Ryan Tannehill was our quarterback, and uh, we was in you know, a lot of read option, a lot of uh, pistol offense, to kind of throw off, throw off defenses, give them different looks. So I think it's going to be a, 
really uh, good for our offense, especially the quarterbacks that we have now in our quarterback room. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Omar Ruiz. Hey, Mike. Good to see you, man. <clears throat> you too. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned some of those changes in the playbook, changes at quarterback. What kind of impact does that have on the offensive line? In other words, you know, how does that change maybe what you guys do from your end? And then, and then my follow-up would be, um, realistically, Mike, how much time do you think you need, you know, once they were to start a training camp for you to be game ready, uh, you know, for a week one? Uh, okay, so I guess to answer the first question, I, I think how it helps us as an offensive line is that, you know, whenever you have a mobile quarterback, uh, it helps you in, in every aspect, um, especially in the passing game, because when teams are afraid to blitz you because you, they know a quarterback can run and scramble outside the pocket or they have to use an extra spy guy to drop and uh, be able to protect from the quarterback running. So I think it helps the offensive line out tremendously, especially in our play action game. But um, the second question, I guess, what was the second one now? Just how long you would need to get your uh, okay, ready to play. Great. I think a couple of weeks. I think uh, whenever we go back for training camp, uh, just the physical nature of uh, getting back used to be able to put on football pads and getting that soreness out of the way of, you know, you carrying on an extra 12 pounds, you know, with all the pads, uniform and the pads and helmets that you put on. So I think for me, I think it takes a couple of weeks just to get adjusted back to the, uh, you know, the physical nature part of it. But the mental part of it, you know, you get that back in a couple of days. It just takes repetition. And I think well, that'll, that'll be get done through walkthroughs. So. Cool. Thanks, Mike. From uh, Jeff, back to you. <clears throat> Mike, you said you're down in Florida. I think things are probably a little, little, maybe a little more open in that part of the world. Are you concerned at all with some of the stuff you hear about what's happening out here in California and LA and the, the extending these stay at home orders and stuff? I mean, does that concern you at all about as it might relate to this season for your team specifically? Uh, I mean, the, the concern part for me is just more for the safety of, you know, just the people out there. But I just feel like if, uh, you know, the NFL is, you know, so far advanced and they're thinking that they've already thought about different locations, to, you know, place our football team and, you know, stuff for us to be able to play at if things get pushed back so that we have the same competitive advantage as other football teams are starting on the same time. So I'm not too much concerned about it because I know the NFL is going to do a great job of figuring that all out and getting us all be able to work, you know, at the same time. If it came down to you guys had to move somewhere to play, would you be okay with that as a veteran player? If you had to move to Nevada, Arizona? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, all of us are dealing, you know, with change throughout these tough times. And I think this is something that everybody in the world has to adjust to, not just us as football players. So we're all professionals whenever it comes to us having to be able to work and go be able to feed our family. So if we had to go, uh, move to a different state or a different city to be able to, you know, get back to work and be able to help feed our families. And I, I'm sure a lot of guys and most of the guys would be uh, for it. Thanks. Uh, Joe, back over to you. Mike, in terms of the, with Coach Camp, and what, what's the biggest thing in terms of technique or um, uh, the blocking schemes that's going to be the biggest difference this year? Well, right now, as of right now, we just, you know, been covering the playbook. We kind of just went over techniques here and there a little bit. But uh, you can tell Coach Camp has been in his own scheme for a long time. And he's big on, you know, being able to run off the ball, using all your, you know, all your uh, momentum, be able to block guys and stuff like that. So we'll see how it goes whenever we get to be able to work with guys and uh, be able to get to back to football and be able to work with Coach Camp. But I think uh, you know, guys will be able to run off the ball a little bit faster this year and it'll help in our zone schemes. And then just how much it has having Bulaga in those Zoom meetings help because he he was with Coach Campen for a lot of years as far as maybe relating to you guys how he is and what he looks for. Uh, it's been it's been awesome. I mean, because you know Bulaga is a veteran player that's obviously um, you know been around Coach Campen before, been around his terminology. So to be able to have him be able to be there and uh you know, be on Zoom calls and kind of, you know, break down different terminologies because hear from a coach is different, but hear from a player that's been out there and kind of breaking it down the way he sees it gives us an advantage to be able to think faster and, uh, you know, kind of process the new information that we're getting faster. Okay, thanks. Uh, Gilbert, you're up. Yeah, hey, uh, Mike, just to kind of follow up on the, I guess, the uncertainty of the season, uh, do you get the sense that most guys do want to play a season in 2020 or are you think that some guys are kind of skeptical skeptical about what's going on in the world you know I'm worried about all the testing the vac having a vaccine and stuff like that do you think most guys are ready to play and not really concerned about that right now 
Yeah, I can't really speak for most guys because, you know, I haven't been in contact with that many people. But I can only speak for me and my brother. And I say for them, we're ready to get back. You know, we're ready to, for the, you know, the world to re reopen. Um, we're ready for, you know, things to kind of get back to normal as much as possible. But you know, I think the rest of the world's ready for that. And people are tired of sitting at home and they're ready to get back to our, you know, the way our country used to be. And if we got to, you know, social distance and do that and wear masks everywhere we go, let's do it. Let's, let's get it. Let's get it back going. Let's figure out a way. But I think us sitting at home isn't helping anything.